Secure Ninja TV is in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and behind me you can see the summit of Pikes Peak through the clouds. It's a good distance away. You know, if I wanted to control a computer that was all the way up there on the summit of Pikes Peak, I could do it from the distance from down here. How might I do that? One way would be to use a KVM. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja TV again, and we're still at the Rocky Mountain Cyberspace Symposium. I'm here with John. John is with GND North America, and your company makes KVM stuff. Secure high performance KVMs. Secure high performance KVMs, excellent. Now, KVMs are very often seen in enterprise environments. I used them myself in my previous positions, and I would have my operators, they would have a Linux PC and a Windows PC under their desk. They'd have a single keyboard, a single mouse, and usually two monitors, and they were able to swap between the Microsoft machine, for instance, answering my emails, you know, get it done now, and then they go to their Linux machine and actually do the stuff they'd uh, maybe SSH into the machine, the server, and do the maintenance, whatever needs to be done. So KVM's very well known, but you guys have stepped it up a little bit. Do you want to tell us about uh, your systems and what you do? Absolutely. So at GND, we make manufacture, engineer and manufacture, secure high performance KVM systems. KVM being keyboard, video, mouse. So what we do differently though, is, is that we make a very secure product that's very high performance. We then do it in multiple categories. First and foremost, KVM extension. KVM extension is gonna be from point to point. Computers over here, 10,000 meters over here, we can have the operator, feels that uh, uh, operates with the computer as if it's just right underneath the desk. So what we would call in the cybersecurity training field, a VDI basically, or you know, you've know, you got a basically a dumb terminal in front of you that connects to the actual server. Correct, but it's using hardware to be able to do it. It's not necessarily using software to be able to do it. But what we're doing is we're separating the man and the machine. So therefore we can place the computer in a very secure area or in an environment that's gonna allow it to operate optimally, such as a very cool environment, whereas we have the operator actually out in the control room space itself. Awesome. And that can be actually up to about 10,000 meters. Then we also have KVM switches. KVM switches can be a single operator to multiple computers. Think of a single operator station to where an operator's there, has access to two, three, or four multiple computers, and is easily be able to switch between those and keeping those computers isolated from one another. And then KVM matrix switching it's going to be a combination of multiple operators being able to access any number of applications, whether that be a physical application that's located on the computer in the control room, or whether that's a virtual application located somewhere on the cloud. And again, maintaining separation between those systems, completely isolated. Excellent. Um, would you like to demonstrate um, your KVM system here first, please? Yeah, absolutely. So what we have here is I have a small matrix system with using the GND system. So what we have here is basically a three by two system. Underneath here, I have two NUC computers. So basically think of computer A, computer B. And at the top here, I have a, comp a laptop computer. What we do is we connect a laptop or a computer source to what we call a CPU module. Think of that as an input module. We match the flavor of video, the type of USB that we need, the form factor we need, the type of redundancy that we need. And then these type of devices being CPUs then connect to a switch device. That switch device has an intelligent controller, which is the GND magic that we put into the system. And then from there, we connect to what's called a con module, a console model, a console sorry, console module, which is then connected to the computer monitor, as well as to the keyboard and to the uh, mouse. And if we need to connect to CAC uh, readers or any other type of USB peripheral, then it can connect to that as well. So three primary components, an input device, which we call a CPU, a switching device, and then also an output device, which we call a COM module. And the COM module is like this one here, it's gonna be near the operator. That is absolutely correct. And with GND, again, we're mission critical. Everything we make is very rugged, very secure. The back side of it, we're able to connect to the video, we're able to connect to audio, <clears throat> able to connect to the USB traffic, and then also redundant power. And then we're able to connect to a network. We can connect to that network over a copper cable or over fiber optic cable, depending upon what the requirements of the mission are. Excellent. Yeah. So I see you've got uh, two different, you've got two different servers connected at the moment. Yeah, so what we have right now is we have monitor one and monitor two. Each one of these monitors right now is accessing a separate computer. So let's just say computer A and computer B connected to this system here. And in front of the operator, I have a single keyboard and I have a single mouse, and then I also have a keypad that I'm adding here. Now to be able to allow myself to be able to control one computer over the other, I'm simply gonna move the mouse 
comes here on computer A, and then I can move to computer B. Now I'm controlling that. So I'm simply moving the mouse here, coming back over here, moving this particular application. We call this at GND cross display switching. All we have to do is simply move the mouse from one computer to the next. We are not touching the operating system. We're not touching the computer. So as a result of it, both of these computers are completely separated from each other. So when your mouse moves to the other monitor, the system knows I'm now going to control the other server. That is absolutely correct. And the operator doesn't have to do anything other than just moving the mouse to the other pixel space. Makes it very easy. And we can do this in unlimited. We can do any number of displays in any orientation in any resolution. Okay. Whatever that, that whatever that control room operator needs at that station, we can follow. Well, let's do the magic now. Let's move to another PC. In fact, we're going to move over to the laptop. So let's have the operator take control of that third computer. Yeah, so therefore the operators at this, I'm looking at this monitor. As you said, I want to be able to control this laptop. So everything that we can do can be simply done through hotkeys on an on-screen display. What this is going to do is this is going to bring up all of the computers that this particular operator has a the credentials to access. I'm only going to see what I can control. In this case, of course, I've just got the three sources on the system. So what I can do is I can simply scroll down to the source that I'm wanting to control, hit enter, and that automatically changes that source to that. That changes the video, that changes the audio, and that also changes all the USB functionality as well. And the operator now has control of that third machine. Absolutely. So now I can operate that computer just as if I'm sitting in front of that computer. It has full control over it. Excellent. Well, John, that's very interesting. It's a really good demonstration of the power. And what I really like is the speed, how quickly you can move between the different servers. Um, it can be local or it could be over IP as well, as you mentioned. Uh, it's a very interesting system, very good time saver, a lot quicker than SSHing into servers or RDP and into servers. John, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for the demonstration. Hopefully we'll catch up with you again at Secure Ninja TV. It's Thank been a pleasure. Appreciate you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and to like because you never know where we're going to be next. I'm Andrew Howard from Secure Ninja TV. We'll talk to you again soon.